Okay, hello guys. My name is Anton Gavaruchin. Maybe you're more familiar with Nasser Seb as well. I am playing duelist for the Nasser Valorant team. And today I'll do a coaching session on the topic of like playing duelist on different maps and like how to be impactful with it. So uh, if you start with start with heaven for example you're, okay let's start with basics what is your task what is your job on duelist basically your job is to get entry kills on ct and t side and you have to gain a lot of info even though you have scout agents like sova fader sky which provides info your like rescue and ability for example on jet is dash it can provide a lot of info and you can lock a particular part of the map pretty easily so uh, if we speak about heaven for example what you have to understand you have to understand basic things first of all you need to understand how is enemy team playing what do they do what is their default for example if their default is that they reveal A, right, here, or whatever. And then they're just running like monkeys. So you decide you can go short, you can get killed, right? Also, what you need to be focusing on is that you have your teammates. All of your teammates, when you play duels, they have abilities that can help you, like most of them. So try to work as a team, because Valorant is a team shooter. And that will allow you to be really impactful and it will make your team progress faster. If you just play together, you're getting used to it and you're gonna have more space because you cannot win any game solo. Of course you can if you drop like 50 kills but it's gonna be very hard if you're playing enemies that are your level or maybe above. So, let's speak about having an aim. If enemies do this reveal, you ask, for example, to go short, like you read, you understand that you'll have timing on short or whatever. You're playing here, for example, right? Or you're peeking. Then, for example, you have bridge, and they starting to drone, and you understand one guy is following it. So, when drone is here, you can ask for stun. He stuns, you activate your dash, you kill one guy, you dash back. That's it. It's very important to stop enemy, enemy pace by killing one guy. When you kill one guy, they have, like... I don't know, a couple of seconds while they're trying to understand what happened to them and you have, you can always move and be unpredictable. That's also very important when you play Duelist. You not only understand the default, the opponent team playing, but also uh, what they're gonna do. Like you have to understand what is the idea behind them, like you need to try. It's obviously you're not gonna be all the times right, but uh, whatever play you're gonna call, it's very important that you're gonna call what you're gonna do to your team because then they can support you. Um, if you speak about, for example, they take you long, but you're out of jail or whatever, you decide to fight long. What you can do? You know the reveal, right? Like you're playing default like a couple of times, like Dart always here. You can basically smoke this arrow, right? You can pick it because enemies, they don't hear it and they don't know. Like they see the reveal, they're like, oh, it's free. But they're coming and then you're here with up and you're like destroying their whole executor or whatever. Also you need to have a different variations. For example, you want to play long and this reveal is coming, right? You can ask someone to break it. You can play here. You can play this position passively and on good timing you can ask for utility and then pick with it. You can pick on timing. You can jump on top here and pick. You can go insta if the enemy is smoking. You can go out here with reveal or sound or flash or whatever. So you need to be always, you need to be always unpredictable and do different things because if you're gonna do one thing, enemy team is gonna adapt really fast to the way you're playing. Uh, okay, if you speak about A, for example, you you kept picking short and you kept doing like impact and you understand enemy is gonna come A, and there is this reveal that uh, most of the teams do to punish the short guy. So. You, you start and you insta smoking this, like pre-fire, maybe they didn't do it, but you know, they gonna adapt to you. So you smoke it and then the reveal coming. And now you have so many options. You can pick, you can hide, 
you can do whatever stuff, but you're unpredictable because you you read what they're gonna do. Uh, so, for example, on A, that's it. Then, if you go B, uh, you also have so many variations of what you can do. You can insta go down mid, right? Uh, if enemy is kill J put in deep turret, for example, you can go down mid. By this play, right, you're not getting kills, most likely, like on, on a good level, but you're gonna have full info. You are hearing all of this map, all, all this part of map, which is super important, which is gonna help your team to make the right rotation, to to face enemy team as a stack. What you can also do, you can, you should realize that, uh, for example, kill Joy put in turret second mid always, right? This play cannot work if you're like if your teammates are st stuck somewhere else and they cannot help you. You can insta pick garage and punish this guy. You need to be very. You need to believe in yourself, because if you don't believe that your play is gonna work, it's not gonna work. Just just believe that you're gonna kill him. You're jumping out, boom, dead. You killed Killjoy. Sentinel dead. Now they you can lurk, you can take all over the map. But when you get a kill, it's very important to keep the advantage. So when you're killing one guy, for example, you're killing, like, you see two, you kill one, you're dashing back, and then you're like, I'm gonna be James Bond. And you're jumping out again. Even if you get the kill, and you're getting killed. It's 4 on 3, right? But 5 on 4, it's easier because you are not... Like, you're playing default and you don't have that much gaps on the map. But when your teammates or you keep dying somewhere, you need to restructure your positions. And if you are not on a top level, it's very hard to adapt to it fast. So, try to not die for free. Your job is to get an entry. You don't need to do hero, you don't need to kill all 5. You have your teammates to kill all 5. So, yeah. Uh, on Garage, also the player like to do, for example, they're playing second mid, but like, if they're not breaking doors, this position is superior because people are never expecting and it's super hard to kill you, like, they go, they have these two angles and like, nobody goes like this and prefires you, but if you have up, you just click one button, easy kill, easy advantage, you live in it. On C side, the updraft of Jet allows you to take so many positions, uh, for example, you can play on top of here, right? Like swing after some time or whatever. You can play plato. You can play top plato. You can play behind plato. You can play even on top of this box with dash activated. You can play even here and pick on timing or insta watch it. Also, if for example you're on C, right? Or on B or on A, and nothing happens on your side, and something's happening on the other, on the other side of the map, you shouldn't uh, stay like this for the whole round. Your task is to get info. So what you do, you basically go contact. You go contact, you go contact, then you like pick it somehow, right? You know, it's not C. You can lock C and then one guy who was playing with you, for example, you played like, I don't know, two garage, right? One guy can rotate. So you can, he can go to A link. So we still have B control, but you have more people to rotate in case it's A. Um, speaking of T side, I think it was brief about City, but I think you can understand what I said. Uh, your task not to be a hero again, like call abilities, same it, same, uh, same rules work for the T side as well. If you wanna go towards A, you call in the play, you saying they stunning it, they revealing, can somebody break reveal, somebody's breaking reveal, you smoking this, for example, Breach is stunning, you picking, you getting control, then you are not rushing like an idiot, you are not pushing, you have to wait for your team. The point is even if they support it, you are, you are not going like this, dashing and shooting everything you see. No, you going step by step. Your team should support you and you cannot kill five people on site if they are all watching only one entrance where you're gonna go out from. So basically you take long, you wait for your team, you talk, you saying like, I'm gonna pick this, hold my right, you picking this, you saying it's clear, then everybody gets ready with their ability, then you are ready to go. You have to also have different pathing on site, it is very important. For example, if you play against Breach, Breach is always like a link rotator, right? So when he comes back, he will flash this most of the time. So what you can do on the jet, if your team is coming behind you from long, you smoke this and you dash in it. Because Breach now cannot flash your teammates, only here, but if you're already going out, like uh, this angle, they shouldn't be worried about. So they can insta pick and they're not risking to get, uh, to get flashed. Also, if you're no, they're on short, for example. 
you smoking like this, like this, asking for ability on short, like flash of woman or something, picking this, picking everything, clearing side. The most important thing, you have to clear positions. If you're dashing out and you understand people on short, you are not going like a monkey, but maybe sometimes you can do it, but most of the time you shouldn't. You're not going anywhere to get a kill. Your first side is to, to secure the side. Kills are uh, like extra. It's not that important. First of all, your task is to clear the side. And when you're playing on duelist, you don't have that much of ability that is super impactful. Not like sentinels, smokers and initiators. Because your abilities, for example, on jet, they don't do damage, right? And like on retake, yeah, they can be useful. But your teammates' abilities... Okay, basically the idea is that the guy who has no abilities, you're, you can risk with him. For example, you have no ability and like bridge with full ability coming to you. And you're not baiting him to go here. You're saying him to come after you and you're like uh, cutting the angle. You know, you can jump out or whatever, but you, you're making sure this guy behind you, he doesn't die. You can die, but it's not a big problem. If you secure the site, you can, like, your job is done. Uh, about A, that's it. For example, if you speak of B. Again, you're asking for abilities because enemies also have duelists and they can be predicting your moves. So if you have support of your teammates, it's not gonna be that hard. You can do this smoke, right? Dash on top if you wanna execute B or whatever. Then you do not stay like static. You can take different position. You should be putting so much pressure. Like you should here in one smoke, shoot there. Like you clear backside, you clear it. You go back, you shoot again. You go on top here, you get in one kill. After you get in one kill, if you have the spike planted and enemies can't really have like, I don't know, Astra ult or whatever, you can leave it. You can just leave it. You did your job, job is done, so like just play with your team. No need to stay here on site. But sometimes there is rounds when you, for example, execute C, right? And enemies have breach ult or Sova ult. And if you go all long and enemies put one reveal, and they know site is clear, they're not gonna ult site, they're not stupid. They're gonna ult you long and they gonna destroy you here and here and here. So, take C for example, right? You have reflex, it's, or no reflex, right? It's 5 on 5. What you can do? You're saying to your team, you can go play for long. Like just leave me on site and you can support him, you can ask for flash, you can ask for smoke here or whatever. But most important, you put pressure, you break reveal, you shoot, you shoot. And you're making enemies uh, scared. By making them scared, they will make mistakes, they will use their ult, it's fine, they will waste time killing you. And that's very important if, to win time. To not just go like this, stay here and wait for enemies to come and kill you. Because you're not winning time that way. Um, so yeah, sometimes when you're going on jet, it's very, one more thing about city side. To be unpredictable, right? And it's not only about round to round, it can be in the same round. For example, you started on C, right? Omen or someone trying to take her. You get one kill, you dash and back. And you understand that they know that opens on C. What you have to do? You instantly change in your position. You can go lock mid, you can go pick B, or you can go A. A enemies always, when they see operator on one side, they're trying to go to another side. So you should also understand that uh, if you move around the map, like throughout the round, and like you have your team structure, so if you are solo C, you are not leaving C, but if you have someone to take it for you, you can leave it, because enemies will think that op is not on A, let's go A, but you're already on A, and you're getting one more kill, right? So it's gonna be very impactful. And uh, very important, like last thing I want to say, is that you need to think a lot. It's not that simple, it's not, your game shouldn't be brainless. The players that are smart, they always get good scores on jet, even though, like on duelist, I mean. Even though maybe their aim is not like 100%, like not the best like around the world, right? But their movement and their ideas which makes them caught, catch enemies off guard, that's what makes them the best duelist players. So yeah, that was me, CBS2O. See you in next coaching sessions.